So we're trying to solve for part one, four sine x is equal to sec x in the interval of zero to pi over two. So the first step would be to change the sec x into one over cos x. And then bring the cos x to the left hand side. And then we can use the fact that, the rule that, 2 sine x cos x is equal to sine 2x. So if I bring a factor of 2 from this equation to the right hand side, so divide both sides by 2, I get 2 sine x cos x is equal to a half. And then the left hand side becomes sine 2x equals a half. Okay, so now we can solve this equation sine 2x is equal to a half. We need to change the domain as well. Because we have 2x inside this bracket, inside the sine function, we have to multiply our domain by 2 to get this x to be 2x. So it becomes 0 is less than or equal to 2x, which is less than pi. And now we want to solve this equation in this domain. So inverse sine of a half, that will give us pi over 6. And to work out the next angle in this domain, the first thing that we would do is do pi minus the principal value. You can always do that for sine functions. Work out your principal value and then do pi minus that. Then you get your second angle. And then from these two things, pi over six and five pi over six, we then add or subtract two pi as many times as we need to, to get all the other angles in our domain. But if we were to do so, if we were to add two pi to either of these angles, it wouldn't be in our transformed domain, so we stop there. 2x will only equal to pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6 in this domain of 0 to pi. So now we can divide that equation by 2, and we end up with pi over 12 and 5 pi over 12. So that'll be our final answer for part 1. And for part 2, we're solving 5 sine theta minus 5 cos theta is equal to 2 between 0 and 360. So whenever we have something of the form of a sine theta plus or minus b cos theta, and the sine and the cos can be the other way around as well, we want to express this in the form of either r sine theta plus or minus alpha, or r cos theta plus or minus alpha. That's useful because if we change this into one of these two forms, we convert these two trig functions into one. And if we have a single trig function is equal to a number, then we can solve it. So to figure out which one to use, we have to first think of the expansions of these two things, of sine theta plus or minus alpha and cos theta plus or minus alpha. And we have to think about which expansion matches up to what we have here. So what we have here is a sine minus a cos. So we have to think about which one of these addition formulae expansions will give us a sine minus a cos. And that would be r sine theta minus alpha. So we want to express 5 sine theta minus 5 cos theta as r sine theta minus alpha. So the expansion of r sine theta minus alpha would be r sine theta cos alpha minus r cos theta sine alpha. And for these two things to be equal, well, let's look at the similarities first of all. So we see sine theta here, sine theta here, cos theta here, cos theta there. So for these two to be equal, that would mean that the 5 would equal to r sine alpha, and also the 5 that we have here must equal to r cos alpha. Okay, so let's just write that down below. So we have r sine alpha is equal to 5, and then we also have r cos alpha is equal to 5. We can solve those two equations simultaneously to work out what r and alpha are. So we can divide them. So if I were to do r sine alpha divided by r cos alpha, this will give me 5 over 5.
So that's just doing this equation divided by that equation. On the left hand side the r's cancel out and the sine over cos becomes tan alpha. And the right hand side 5 over 5 is just 1. And then inverse tan of 1 and alpha gives 45 degrees. Okay so we've worked out what alpha is, now we need to work out what r is as well. To do that we can use this equation sine squared alpha plus cos squared alpha is 1. We can multiply this entire thing by r squared. So it becomes r squared sine squared alpha plus r squared cos squared alpha is r squared. And the reason this is useful is because what we have here is the same as this, but squared. So that first term will then be 5 squared. And the second term is what we have here. So that will also be 5 squared. So now we've worked out what r squared is equal to. So r squared is 50, and that means that r is equal to the square root of 50, which will be 5 root 2. Okay, so now we've worked out what r is, we've worked out what alpha is. So therefore we can say, so our equation originally was 5 sine theta minus 5 cos theta is equal to 2. We can now rewrite the 5 sine theta minus 5 cos theta as this, r sine theta minus alpha, which is 5 root 2 sine theta minus alpha, which is 45 degrees. So we were solving this equation in the interval of 0 to 360. So because we have theta minus 45 inside our sine function, I'm going to take away 45 from every part of this inequality we get minus 45 is less than or equal to theta minus 45, which is less than 315. So now we're solving this equation in this domain. Divide both sides by 5 root 2. 2 over 5 root 2, which is the same thing as root 2 over 5. Do inverse sine of both sides. Inverse sine of root 2 over 5 is 16.43 and then because we're considering sine to find our next angle we do 180 minus this 180 minus that gives us 163.57 and these are the only two angles that we would have in our domain if we were to add or subtract 360 to either of these which would be the next step to find other angles it would take us outside of our domain and then to finish off, we can add 45 to both of these values, and we end up with 61.4 and 208.6. It wanted it to one decimal place, I believe. Yep, one decimal place. So that will be our final answer.